They're all saving one, or most of them, most of the Hampshire fielders are saving one. Somerset need one run. It's Edwards to Hildreth. He's there and bowls Hildreth, and he gets the run away through the onside, and Somerset have won. They've won the Royal London One Day Cup. Hello there, you're listening to Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. This is the Somerset Cricket Podcast. My name's Ian Shepherd. Joining me this evening, I've got Dan Kingdom, Somerset CCC President Peter Wanless, and the voice of cricket on BBC Radio Somerset, Anthony Gibson. Right, where shall we start with Saturday then? Somerset uh, unable to pull off uh, pull off the heroics of a semi-final... Well, unable to pull uh, victory out of the jaws of defeat like they did uh, 12 months ago. Uh, I suppose, in a way, I'm a little bit glad that I didn't go up to, <laughs> to Edgbaston and, uh, and witness a, a Somerset defeat. But uh, the three of you were there, and um, was it pretty much that just Hampshire bowled well? I mean, I, I saw a little bit of it. I had Gibbo in my ear while I was watching my little girl's uh, dance show on Saturday afternoon, which was rather rudely scheduled uh, to uh, cut, encompass the whole of our batting innings. Well, at least the portion that mattered anyway. Um but from what I've seen, we lost wickets at the wrong times. Never really got a partnership going, and Hampshire bowled pretty well. Yeah, couldn't disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it boiled down to a, to a, a contest between our batsmen and their bowlers, and their bowlers were a bit better than our batsmen. I have to say, I think the um, the preparations were dreadful. I mean, not not through Somerset's fault, but you know, to have the to have the final just a week after the quarter final with a really um, wearying four-day county championship match up at Southport in between, where Somerset were out in the field for 150 overs while Keaton Jennings ground his way remorselessly <laughs> to his <laughs> tri- triple hundred. I mean, that was that was pretty gruelling for the six members of the team who were in playing in that game in uh, uh, at Lancashire. And I thought it showed... They, you know, they they weren't on top of their games. You know, you know it was, they looked a bit a bit tired, a bit careworn. And Hampshire, by contrast, you know their game was over in in three days, so they had the extra day off, and they looked really sharp. And we weren't really sharp. We you know we were not at our best, as Tom Abel said to me uh, afterwards. And we can't have any complaints about um, about the outcome. Yeah, from what I did see of the uh, the Hampshire innings, it was uh, a few uncharacteristic uh, misfields and a and a bit of sloppiness with the Somerset field, in which we don't we don't normally see. Um, Dan, was that your your take on it as well? As you were paying six pound for ice creams, or did you see much of that? Or are you <laughs> queuing to be ripped off by Mister Whippy? Yeah, th- there was the old, there was a couple drop catches, a couple of misfields. Um, I think we we bowled quite well. I think in the second half of the innings, you know, we, we pulled yeah. things back quite nicely. Um, you know, they went off like a train, um, and they looked like getting sort of two twenty odd. Um, but but unlike, it's unlike us, really, to bowl well at the death. But we actually did this time. And uh, Roloff bowled the last over, which was different. I assume that was because Sid have got injury. Um, but Roloff bowled a really good final over. So I was reasonably happy at the halfway stage to seeing Lancashire chase, you know, two ten. Or two, was it two, two or five to win, wasn't it, uh, in the first semi-final? I was thinking, yeah, we hopefully we can do the same or similar because it was a bit less. Um, but yeah, just unfortunately it wasn't to be. I think um, a few flaws in our side were exposed. You know, we were a good T20 side, clearly. You know, we we finished second in our group. We won six out of seven away games in the group stage, which is a sign of a good side, I think. But clearly, we've got a few flaws. And one of them is we've not successfully chased a high total this season. Um, I think the highest we chased was probably Canterbury, was it? That was was, uh, was that one seventy odd. Um, this was yeah. We've, we've certainly not chased a one ninety odd. We've failed three times at Taunton chasing two hundred or so. Um, and yeah, and it's it sort of exposes our policy of always bowling first. I know we obviously you know we're, I know Hampshire won and the Taunton chose to bat in the semi final, but. We sort of we seem set on this bowl first policy. We were going to bowl first, regardless. Um, and I just wonder whether actually we're better batting first. Um, we've only lost once batting first this season, so I think it's something to think about going forward. Um, but yeah, who we, knows? we only lost. We only lost that one because um, of the last ball four. Well, exactly. Yeah. Um, I think also I don't want to single out individual players, but I think. Lamamie and Gregory will be disappointed with how they played with the bat this season in the blast. I think 
we've been a bit over reliant on the top four, and sort of once once they were all gone in the semi final, you know, I pretty much lost hope because there's not been too much. There's been obviously there's been times where the top four have chased it down, and the middle order haven't had to do anything, but there have been times where the middle order has just folded, and unfortunately, it happened again. I mean, Lambie struggled a bit, as Anthony said. Maybe he was a bit tired. You know, he had a high score, I think, didn't he? Um, but he wasn't scoring particularly quickly. Um, didn't look massively comfortable. And Gregory, again, it just continues a long-term trend. You know, he's not been particularly good for us in T20 cricket with the bat for the last few years, uh, unfortunately. Um, we were missing Overton and Davey, and that, you know, that didn't help, obviously, in the power play. Um, thankfully, we got rid of Vincent McDermott fairly quickly. But um, Overton and David would have given us an extra dimension to the attack. Um, but unfortunately, there's nothing we could do about losing them. Yeah, I mean, not just with the uh, with the ball, but with the bat as well. Both of them have been instrumental in getting us over the line in uh, in some tight run chases this year. President Pete, you're looking resplendent yeah. every time you come on. I always look forward to seeing what shirt you're wearing. You've got a glorious kind of playing card yeah, design yeah. on you today. It, it it's wonderful. I, I'm completely in awe of it, and it puts my collection of uh, of dodgy shirts to shame. But um, yeah, I mean, what, what did you yeah. make of it up there? Uh? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with a lot of of what's been said. I was the the, the sort of T Twenty game that disproves that sort of analysis. I suppose was slightly counter to it is the one that we won at Lords, where um, uh, we did. Uh, chase it down we lost quite a few wickets but we still had strength and depth and as you said uh, you know Overton and Davy came in and, and smacked it around and and uh, like like Dan I sort of felt 190 was pretty good achievement actually especially after the the start that Hampshire got I was you know, I was thinking we were going to be chasing 222 230 uh, and then I had this kind of belief in the depth of our batting that a few I mean, if, you, if you lose a couple of wickets another person's coming in and you keep going and you keep going but we just it just didn't happen and it that felt deflating and then, then it sort of and it all went with a a whimper really nobody did did i think no one hit more than one six no player or maybe someone got two no, but, I think but Russo no, hit at no. least two i think he hit the one that went right over the holly stand and then there was oh, yeah, one that was incredible <laughs> one straight back over the bowl, or maybe that was Banton. But no one really, no well, one it really got Yeah, it doesn't detract from the point that, yeah. Um, I mean, Smead was 9 off 8, Banton 12 off 10, Russo 23 off 20, Abel 27 off 21. You look at uh, then Lamanby 34 off 27, and Gregory 18 off 12. So nobody really in that top six got going to the degree that you need to to, to chase down a 190 total and, and it's yeah and it just felt like it it just felt like it drifted away from us which was disappointing when if you look at the season as a whole you know we've had some incredibly entertaining games i mean of course the quarter final but that chase down at middlesex was was great the one that anthony referenced where we just lost on the last ball by that four from from mckay you know it's been a I think I think we've had sort of value for money, but ultimately a game came up short, and you just uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just was just wasn't to be. And I think you make a great point, Anthony, about that really tiring game up at Southport. You know, I mean, it, it's a bloody long way up to Southport, as uh, as I'm sure you <laughs> I'm sure you know, having having had done it in the last uh, in the last four or five days there and back. Um, I mean, you know, had we had a home game at Taunton, it might have been a bit better. Could you even go so far as to say let's play the quarterfinals so they finish on Wednesday and then have the finals day on Saturday? Is that is that well that, too little that would be better. To, well, I just you you've got to think of the supporters though, mm -hmm. haven't you? You know, it's very difficult to make plans to mm -hmm. go and stay in stay in Birmingham for a night, which is what it involves for a lot of people. Um, not necessarily from Somerset, but from a lot of other counties. How much room have you got, Dan? Could you? How many could you fit in? Three days notice. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I've got big rooms to be Yeah, I'm just thinking of you know, if if you do have that week in between, you are inevitably going to fill it with with a championship game, and that and you know that could involve you know maybe Hampshire going to Durham or Somerset going up to Lancashire or Kent going up to to Yorkshire or something like that, and and you know one side is is disadvantaged over over the others well, well, what was what was wrong with the arrangement last year when we played our, our quarter final at the end of july 
and then the um, finals day was the middle of September on a Saturday. And you, do get, pretty well. you do get these sort of strange hirings for one game and that sort of thing, don't you? I mean, it was nice for us that Russo was able to play through and into yeah. the final. I guess that's the that's the counter argument. Yeah, yeah that... overseas players were the big reason, I think. And also just to keep the, the tournament was a bit disjointed last year. It was end of August the, the quarter final was after the hundred and then yeah, you're right. yeah, it was August. after that. It was very disjointed the tournament and final day was lacking overseas players for the most part. So yeah, there's no there's no perfect solution. There's pros and cons whatever you do. And unfortunately the the schedule is so packed that it's it's very difficult to sort of have it exactly as you want it. And while I don't want the championship to go down to ten games, that would potentially just give more leeway to improve these sorts of situations. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, like you say, Daz, there's pros and cons. I, I do like the fact that the Blast is, is now played in that block. Um, we're not going to have finals date. What was the what was the date okay. where they finally finished it in the COVID season? Lancashire and... Uh, not, uh, well, not Lancashire, October. sorry. Surrey and Knotts. 4th of October. October. That was reserve day. Yeah. yeah. We don't quite want it that late. And there's got to be a happy medium in there somewhere. I don't know, could you do something different with that week? But then you're not playing Royal London games, so you're going to have to play a championship game. So it, I mean, it's having, really difficult. I mean, could you go... Having having it final day clashing with um, uh, one day international is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're a Lancashire, I mean, we we obviously didn't have Overton, but if you're a Lancashire or Yorkshire supporter, um, some of the people they had missing, it it it, it is the showpiece, isn't it, of the county yeah. season, really? And not not to have Bearstow and Livingston and Root playing was yeah, Butler, Parkinson, Livingston, Overton. Who else would Parkinson have played? Oh, Parkinson. Oh, yeah. Of course, they released him, didn't they? Because he wasn't going to play on the Sunday. But I think there's a few billion rupees worth of reasons why uh, why that one day series was played after the uh, after the test against India. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's the old county fan that has to suffer again. It is a run, It's a running theme through all these podcasts, isn't mm. it? Oh, right. Do we want to? Have we got anything else we need to say about the? Uh, about fun. Should we have a little wrap up of the, of the T Twenty Blast campaign as a whole? I mean, obviously, Russo was a a little gem of a signing. I'm not saying anything more, Anthony. Uh, absolute gem of a signing. <laughs> but uh, I mean, apart from that, we saw. I mean, Peter Siller's obviously been a uh, he's enjoying a sort of a a second coming in his career down in the BBL was a T Twenty bowler with the Adelaide Strikers, and he he sort of fully showed his worth. I mean, did did we find out anything about any other players that we didn't sort of really know already? As apart from that, no, Will Smead, we kind of knew, didn't really come on and develop kind of an extra dimension to his, exactly. to his I play. was just going to say that he's, he's, a, he's one, too one-dimensional, isn't he? And, and opposition teams know how to bowl to him and frustrate him and then get him out. It's, um, I, I think Will, 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 you know, Somebody needs to do some serious work with Will Smead, you know, because he's got the natural talent, but it's, I don't think it's being applied in the right way at the moment. He's so bottom-handed. Even the shots he plays through the offside is all, it's all bottom hand. And I, he's, a better, he's a better batsman than, than, than that. Um, Banton, I, th- I thought the Banton run out was... Oh, yeah, no criminal. dive. Yeah, no dive. Yeah. It, you know, he kind of didn't even have his bat fully extended on his arm, did he? He kind of had a his arm was sort of bent at almost like a forty five degree angle. And if it, I sort of watched yeah. the freeze frame, I mean, if you just do that with your arm, Tom, and put your bat out, you'd have been in. It's, you know, there's a lot to be said for being cool and languid and laid back and taking it all in your stride. But if at least you're being run out when he mm. was actually looking good, wasn't he? Mm. He was yeah. striking the ball well, time timing it nice. I think the the other the other thing. Um, not making excuses, but the pitch did slow up as the day went on, um, and and I thought it was quite noticeable. Even during the course of the Hampshire innings, they found scoring much easier in the first half of their innings than they did in the second half, mm-hmm. and then it became more difficult still as we went in, and then and then you saw the the final as well, where um, Hampshire defended 100, 153 just about. That was a far, <laughs> that was a great end to the tournament, wasn't it? We'll come on to that. We'll come, <laughs> well, on to, we'll come on to that in a second. But yeah, I mean, yeah. 
I mean, Dan, um, what what have you sort of thought about the Blast campaign as a as a whole? Yeah, it's been good fun. I think we've, as I said, as I mentioned earlier, we've probably been a bit over reliant on a couple of batters, but mainly Russo really, and then it's sort of whoever comes off, have Abel Smead and, and Banton. Um, bowling wise, we've been decent. B tops the economy rate. Um, tops tops our averages in terms of economy rate. You know, he was a revelation opening the bowling. Maybe that's something new that we learned this year. Um, yeah, um, I think you know we we clearly on our day are still a very 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 good side. You know, as we showed against Derbyshire, and I think we just need to be batting first more, and then we can really unleash up the potential of our batters. Um, that's, yeah, yeah. I think they, they maybe play a bit more freely when when we bat first. Um, I think we just need to tighten up a few things. You know, we I, in an ideal world we sign a top quality de- overseas death bowler for next season, which obviously is easier said than done. Um, we just need we need Lambie and Gregory to play to their potential. Because um, if everyone does play to their potential, you know, we, we can win the tournament. Um, I've no doubt of that. Um, it's just that the guys we get a few too many guys underperforming this year at times. Um, but we still finished second in the group. We still won six away games out of seven in the group stage. So we clearly aren't far away. Um, I think it remains probably our best format at the moment. Um, there's been, there were some good nights at Taunton this year, some good away away days. I've nice. enjoyed um, yeah. going yeah. and Chelmsford. Um, so yeah, it's been a fun tournament. It has some good spots, some low spots. I think um, I think Ben Green's probably worth a mention as well. Uh, he's a few times he's uh, come in, faced very few balls, and hit hit what he's needed to hit, taken crucial wickets, been economy, I, I don't I haven't got the figures in front of me, but again, I feel like he's um, timed it up a few times when when that's been needed, so um, yeah, useful, and since uh, one was junior and I have a soft spot <laughs> for Ben Green, because he was so crucial to our winning the county championship for Somerset on the international cricket captain ah. computer game, that uh, <laughs> uh, I feel that uh, uh, his his time will come. I mentioned this to Andy Hurry, by the way, and he looked at me like I was completely bonkers. And he's probably right. <laughs> he does realise you're his boss, don't you, Pete? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, have no, I have no power. Uh, it's, oh. uh, oh, no, no, I have no responsibility. Oh. With great no power comes no responsibility. You've got the best thing. <laughs> great job there, Pete. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, I've, I, I need to dig out international cricket captain. I, I was going to play through the season that never was in 2020, and I got to day two of the Warwickshire game, and I got bored and gave up. What were, what, were, uh, what were Greener's stats in uh, in your in your uh, uh, international cricket captain? Uh, uh, I can't remember. I can't remember. It was a while ago. But the other interesting thing about that when we did it was that we signed Tom Cola Cadmore, right. and he was very successful for us as well. So it's all coming together. You see. So if we're, uh, we're... the other person <laughs> and the other one, the other one, but I, I'm not advocating for this because I think he's a bit past it now. Was Luke Wright uh, okay. played some big innings for us? So if we're sat here now in in what let's say fourteen and a half months time, cl- clinching the county championship with Ben Green having scored fifteen hundred runs, batting it where he should down at f- yeah. Where did yeah. you bat him in the order, Pete? Oh, quite high. I think he was three or four. Three or four, um, and he was taking lots of wickets as well. I mean, he just seemed to be. Um, <laughs> I don't know if he had a relative that had uh, access to the. Um, uh, algorithms, but uh, yeah, he was a very good. Su- he was a very good player in that. In so we back game. to Green at four, Cole Cadmore at five, and they'll be sat here in about yeah fourteen, fifteen months' time, having clinched the county championship. And with Luke Wright opening the batting. With Luke Wright opening the batting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there then. I don't think that's uh, <laughs> we'll never get him away from Sussex. Yeah, I can't disagree with what any, any of the guys have said. I think, you know, on our, on our day, as we saw against against Derbyshire, we're a complete force to be reckoned with, but we do have it in us just to have one of these days where nobody, if, you know, it, it, nobody can quite come off and, and just sort of um, get us that partnership that we needed. We needed like a, a 70 or 80 partnership in there, didn't we, to, to chase that down. And we didn't, we didn't quite get it, and it was... Uh, it was unfortunate, but as uh, as a lot of people on uh, Somerset social media have said, the positive half of, of the uh, Somerset fan base social media have said that there were 14 other sides that would have loved to have, uh, have been at finals day, and I think that's probably the pragmatic way of looking at it. So, from defeat to a, well, a victory of sorts, which I suppose isn't really 
wasn't really a victory because it was a draw, but it was our first draw of the season, and we did manage to bat out the final day up at uh, up at Southport, not without a few uh, a few little uh, hiccups along the way, but uh, yeah, a match that was notable for an a fantastic and I'm going to say a coming of age performance from Little Lewis Goldsworthy. Yeah, he was brilliant. Brilliant. He, um, Can I just interrupt showed... you there, Anthony? When you said, yeah. I was listening to, to your commentary with, with, with Scott Reid through the whole, uh, pretty much the whole of the game, you said uh, two short legs for Lewis Goldsworthy. Now, was that intentional, or did you... Uh... <laughs> ho, ho, ho. It's too, it wasn't too short. Well, there were two short legs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, he, but, but he was... Um, it, he, really, I mean, the 130 that he got, I don't think he gave a chance. Um... And it was an in, innings of great concentration because it was hot, you know, and and uh, the pitch was was quite was quite flat, but it wasn't that wasn't that easy. And you patience was was the watchword, and that's what he what he showed. And, and then in the second innings, um, I mean, he shepherded young James Rue uh, as he'd done in the in the first innings uh, as well. The, the only my only um, problem with it was that he. <coughs> He didn't concentrate on taking the strike at the end from which um, the left-arm spinner was turning it out of the footmarks mm -hmm. to the left-hander, which made James Rue's life really, really difficult. Mm -hmm. That was the only real threat. The, the other end, it wasn't really turning out, out of the, out of the footmarks into a right-hander from, um, from the Harrod Drive end, the, um, the C end, if you like. Um, it wasn't really turning out of the footmarks to a right-hander. So I did think Goldsworthy could have farmed the strike at that end a bit more, but you know, apart, apart from that, he it was, he's a really cool customer. He's got a good head on his shoulders. He's got good basic technique, and uh, I think that'll be the, the start of a, a long and, and uh, distinguished career as a middle order batsman, top class middle order batsman, probably county. I, I can't see him um, being an international. Batsman, given the sort of style that that is expected of international <laughs> cricketers uh, these days, but I think you know he'll score lots of runs for Somerset, and so will James Rue, who equally, uh, you know, a young man but got good head on his shoulders, showed a lot of guts, a lot of good technique as well, and uh, as Jason Kerr said to me in the interview I did with him um, at the end of the game. You know, those two showed some of their supposedly elders and, and betters how to bat because some of the other uh, dismissals in particular were pretty, pretty dire under the circumstances when we needed to bat out the day. Yeah, fantastic. Well, no name, no petrol, but, you know, wasn't very, some of it wasn't very good. Yeah, fantastic all-round performance for Lewis. 130 off 262 balls in the first innings, top score in there, and a total of 446 all out for Somerset. And then... Uh, set in, second innings, the numbers 73 not out of 213 balls. Uh, James Rue, 111 balls um, for his 23 in that second innings, uh, along with Goldsworthy seeing us to the draw peak. Now, you, you weren't there for were you days one and two, you were up there, weren't you? Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, uh, and I, uh, and, and it was, oh, it was lovely, lovely place to be. Not, not just seeing Anthony and Dan, of course, but, uh, uh, yeah, the sun was shining and it was a classic sort of outground, uh, experience, uh, with all the kind of pluses and all the slight frustrations that you kind of forget, but, but, but soon overcome of watching where there aren't really any stands and the, the, the pitch almost kind of tips away from, uh, the wicket and so you're always looking over someone else's shoulder to try and um, get a view and lots and lots of the seating was kind of square onto the wicket it was very difficult to watch from behind the the bowler's arm but uh but yeah really uh really encouraging uh goldsworthy and rue as has, has been said some of the others must feel like they left a lot of runs um uh out there given the big scores that um some of the lecture that has got but uh yeah there we go we we we, we knuckled down didn't win the second half i did i didn't see any of the second two days um i'm afraid um uh just had to sort of pick up the uh the the score alerts um as, as they went and saw with some uh, relief at the end of uh, the fourth day that we'd uh, that we held on and hopefully that will do us uh, some good in terms of uh psychology of feeling that we can kind of get heads down and 
and, and hold on. Yeah, Gibbo said that the, the chairman's tent, which I think was next to where you were commentating with Scott Rieger, but that got sort of progressively rowdier as, as the days went on. That wasn't you, is it, Pete? Were you on your, on your best behaviour? I was on. I, I, clearly, I was a civilised and influence in the first couple of days. And uh, when I, though, though it, was, it was amusing. There was a table for... Um, there was a table for Somerset, which on the first day, only my uncle and I sat at. I'm not sure why. And there were two bottles of wine on the, the table <laughs> and a very um, uh, solicitous uh, uh, waitress hostess came up to us and said, it's five bottles of wine per table, sir. Would you like the other three now or later? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and I wasn't driving. I just had to sort of stagger back to the hotel on that first day. And I thought, I wonder how many of these five bottles of wine I can drink for myself because my uncle's only going to have, you know, a glass and a half. But I, 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 even then, I don't think I disgraced myself. And as you say, it sounds like it was getting louder later on in the match. And I, I can't account for that, I'm afraid. Oh, you could have invited Dan in. Dan, Dan and his lot would have been good for a bottle each. I'd have thought, Dan, what did you, I mean, what did you bet? So you're up there. I'm trying to remember, what, what was the closer play at day two then? It goes where he got his... Yeah, he would have got his home yeah. by then. Yeah, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Innings was well underway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and James Rue as well. From what I saw, he just looked—he just looked the part. He just looked composed. He—he he didn't look flustered. Maybe a good thing to make your championship debut at an outground. I know he's played a uh, bit of fifty over stuff uh, in the Royal London last year up at Taunton, but just a little kind of understated way just to make your way into championship cricket. I mean, how did you think he went down? Yeah, it was very. I mean, he was straight in the reverse sweeps sweeping is something he's he's strong on um based on what i've seen before um thomas oh, you just got very it. sound very confident um you know if those these him and the uh, goals of these partnership was was key really in both innings obviously but you know, in the first innings they put on what 100 and almost 150 um to lift us from a pretty poor start uh well 16 for two then 105 for four i was sort of fearing the worst at that point um, but no, they steadied the ship, and then they did the same in the second innings. You know, it was, you know, great temperament from the two young guys who basically secured us the draw single-handedly. Uh, but you know, it, without them, yeah, we, we do almost certainly have lost that match. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can now take the confidence from that draw into tomorrow, which I, I think is a you know, not yeah, it's pretty much a must-win game and it's a winnable game it, relative to our other matches this season. So. Yeah. yeah, definitely. What did you make of Amar Verdi as well? Because that was an 11th hour surprise that was foisted upon everybody, Somerset and Lancashire fans included, that uh, uh, we had uh, Mr Verdi on loan from Surrey for this game. Um, Wait, didn't take, did he take a wicket? Uh, I don't I think he did. Well, let's, let's get his figures up here. Uh, I wasn't. Yeah, came off first change, uh, 25 overs, one maiden, none for 121. Yeah, no, I wasn't very impressed. I have to say, I don't think he's the bowler he was back in 2018. You know, when sorry, won the county championship, he looked a really, really good prospect. And um, he, he, I don't know, he just wasn't asking enough questions of of the batsman. I mean, it was a pretty flat pitch, but there were, you know, there was a bit of rough uh, at, at both ends that he could uh, operate into. But he was he was completely out bowled by the the young. Um, Lancashire slow left armour. Morley, was, yeah, he yeah. bowled well on that last day, didn't he? Morley, yeah, Morley bowled really, really well, um, and looked a much better bowler than than Amal Verdi. So, I don't think we need to have any regrets about him going back to Surrey or wherever else, wherever else he's going. But it's a shame, you know, because like he's, he's a nice guy and he was a good prospect, and maybe he'll come again. Hope so, anyway. Yeah, I mean, you'd have hoped that he would have. You know, not just for the the factor it would have played in the match if he took a few wickets, but it you know it would have almost been a statement, a, a job application, if you like, of saying, look, I've come here, I've bowled really well for you guys. I know you've got, I know I might play a few games in the seconds, but I know that Jack Leach is going to be away on England duty a lot, a lot of the time, and you know I want you guys to sign me. But it just didn't really, didn't really pan out like that at all, did he? Did you catch any of him, um, Pete Dan, on that second day? Was he bowling on the second day? Not much. No, I, I wasn't. There. Too. Yeah, I, mean, from I, I think we should be open to potentially signing him because yes, while he didn't go brilliantly, um, 
maybe a change of scene is what he needs. And, you know, we need an off-spinner in an ideal world to replace Don Best. He's got, a, you know, he's, yeah, he's, he's clearly declined a bit since his peak, sort of 2018-19, when he won the championship in 2018. Yeah, played Delvers but, you know, still he's not, played a lot this year, is he, though? So it's very difficult to come in cold into a new environment not, with a new team. and We can't get in the Surrey side. Moriarty. No, you, um, you look at Moriarty. Moriarty's not played either well, in the championship. Well, well Jax is the... I don't know if he's the, played much... Has he played much second-team cricket? I, I should have looked. Yeah. Okay, so he's played second-team uh, cricket. It's... Mm. I wasn't... I really wasn't hugely impressed. I, you, you know, he doesn't... Didn't, he didn't... Didn't have much flight. Mm, um, he didn't I mean, there was, flight, there wasn't didn't much... Um, yeah. I, I, he didn't look. Like, he didn't honestly didn't look like he was going to take a wicket. Batted quite well. Yeah, he got a nice four. Did he? Uh, he had a nice four back over the bowler's head, didn't he? That was. Uh, that was getting up there for being a champagne moment. But um, yeah, I mean, roll off uh, to kind of compare and contrast. With Verdi, he took five for one hundred and seventy-four from his forty overs. A few of those were uh, with the guys kind of going for big shots towards the end, but. It just seems to me with that pitch is it was one it, although it was a good pitch and you know ended up in a, in a in a fairly high scoring draw it still looked like you had to to concentrate and, and take your time on it it wasn't one where you could just come in and start smashing it from ball one because we saw that you know Lancashire collapsed from well you say can collapse to six hundred and twenty four for nine but when you consider they were sort of um, let's have a look at the fallen wickets here yeah uh, five four five hundred eighty six quite a few players got themselves out playing big shots towards the end yeah um you know he, he doesn't he doesn't really turn it yeah he's a non non-spinning left arm spinner well, i suppose that's kind he's of great, great, cricketer, great character you know great man to have in the in the team room but he honestly doesn't turn it very much well i suppose if Again, we go, go back to what matt Waller said about comparing him with comparing him with morley you know, Morley looked yeah. a, you know much more likely to take, you know, to to get the batsman out rather than the batsman getting themselves out, which is how, with, with all due respect, Roloff got, got most of his wickets. Yeah, I mean, I suppose if you, if you remember what Max Waller said about um, how the leg spinner bowled at Taunton in the Derbyshire game and compare and contrast that with how Roloff bowls, that's Roloff's style, isn't it? He's very much, a, you know, he's the T20 bowler who will play in the Championship if required and. It's it, very difficult to to kind of switch from those two styles of you know really giving it a rip and really giving it some air to bowling the sort of the flat darts that he does in the in the white ball game. Oh. I mean, what 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 gives it away is that that was his first fifer in oh. first class cricket. He got four at the age of yeah thirty eight. Yeah, got a four yeah, foot Surrey last year, didn't he? You know, but he's what is he thirty thirty seven thirty eight. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's been bowling for a long time. <laughs> it's taken him a long time to take his first five wicket haul. Yeah, that's a good point. And there's you know, a reason for that, and the reason is he didn't really turn it. You know, when you're watching something and you just really want to pick up your keyboard and smash it into the screen and, and shout, "What are you doing, Tom?" We talk about Lambie's dismissal because that was just one of the most comical bits of cricket I've seen batting out for a draw in in my entire life. If you miss what mm. happened, so Morley's bowling uh, left arm over the wicket into the rough. Lamby goes for the reverse sweep. It goes millimeters over the short, le- uh, the sort of the the leg slips leg slip. hand. Yeah, Rob Jones was there. Yeah, Rob Jones, and then he does it exact plays exactly the same shot next <laughs> ball and gets caught at short leg. I know. Batting out. For, I mean, we all say about. You're talking about Baz Ball in the modern way, but compare and contrast that with how he played at Worcester 2020 mm. when he got that brilliant 100. What's that, What's happened to him? Why, why is he doing that? Was there some... I don't know. Is it? Has he heard about this, uh, this sort of statement from Brendan McCullum and Ben Stokes about this is how we want our players to play? Okay, then I still think I'm going for the win. I'm, there's a bit of a gap down there at third man. I'm going to try and uh, try and smash him down there. I mean, I th- I think he was he was tr- just trying to to hit Jack Morley off his length. He was fed up with with getting ball after ball after ball, pitching outside his off stump into the bowler's foot marks, with some of them sort of bouncing and others shooting through, some of them turning and some of them not. 
And I think he, th- he, he thought attack is going to be the best form of defence. Let's take this bloke on. He's only 21 or whatever. He's an inexperienced left arm spinner. But you'd have thought that once bitten, twice shy would have applied yeah. with, with the reverse sweep. <laughs> yeah, five, five or I'm, six overs later, maybe. But the next ball, for God's sake. Yeah, quite. I mean, yeah. if that was me, I'd have, I'd have just took me batting pads off, left them on the boundary edge, jumped over the fence and just got on a, a train <laughs> straight back to Taunton. What did, you, what did you make of that guy? Am I being overcritical to, to young uh, young lammers or was, uh, is that fair game? Both of you are looking like looking at me. I, 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 I haven't seen, seen it. it. I, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I, I, don't don't know. Know. I, I haven't, I haven't seen it. But <laughs> Dan's smiling. Dan must have done. I, no, I didn't actually see it at the time. I don't think I went back to watch it either. I heard about Renshaw's dismissal as well. He ran down caught and bowled, wasn't he? I think. Yeah, he really tame caught and bowled. So, yeah, he maybe just needs you know just to calm down a bit. But just. Yeah, it's, it's difficult because yeah, if it come off, if Renshaw and Lamy shots had come off, we wouldn't have complained. Um, and we, you know, because it's it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's the long, it's the long game, aren't they? They're trying to, yeah, as, as Anthony was just saying, hit the balls off their length. And in the long, if it comes off in the long term, it, it can benefit, make the make batting out for the draw easier. But it's it, yeah, it's it's just about finding that balance, isn't it, between attack and defence when batting out for a draw. And they, neither Lamy or Renshaw are obviously, you know, they're still both relatively young, so it's something that they'll learn in time, mm-hmm. I think. I th- it feels to me like Lamaby's unlearned it, and now needs to learn it again. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, another notable thing for that match for me was um, we have our settled opening partnership of or first choice settled opening partnership of Renshaw and Lamaby, which for some inexplicable reason was um, saw Lamaby demoted to three and Davis push back up the order. Uh, did either of you, with your ears to the ground up at Southport, hear why that was? Or was it just to put Lamanby at three, maybe, in the absence of Abel? Yeah, I guess, I guess that's what it was. But no, I didn't hear any, any sort of explanation for that. I mean, I, you know, um, Steve Davis is an experienced opening opening batter, and, and I thought it was, it was fair enough. And, and he's, he's opened uh, before in the championship for us. Not with any great success, it has to be said. But but he's paid the price now and uh, been dropped for the um, for the Yorkshire game, which I'm you know half of me is sorry about because he's such a pleasure to watch. But in all honesty, averaging was he seventeen and a half something like that. You know you can't afford to carry a, a, a passenger uh, when you've got two other wicket keeping alternatives who are scoring more runs. Or have the potential to score more runs. Yes, yeah, we have a talk about the squad for tomorrow. Then uh, the big news, uh, yeah, Steve Davis is uh, has been uh, has been dropped. Um, either one of James Rue or Tom Banton will take the gloves for tomorrow. I don't think we've we've had a, a nod either way as to, as to who it will be. Uh, if it was you, Pete, who are you giving the gloves to? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> if it was me. This is not um, contractually binding as well. If yes, you're still I, have Jason no, and, and Tom, I have no, I have no influence or responsibility over this. Really, um, uh, I don't know that either of them are kind of falling over themselves to have this role. To be, to be honest, I think they would both maybe prefer to concentrate on their bat, and it's quite a lot to take that responsibility as well, isn't it? So maybe I might marginally. Uh, give it to Banton, just he's got a bit more experience. It's yeah. a lot to ask of Ruin his his second game. Um, so yeah, I would put Banton behind the sticks. Yeah, I think I would too. Yeah, for for exactly the same reason. I think it's going to be Rue. To be honest, I think Rue will bat six and take the gloves. And Banton, Banton, I'm not hundred percent convinced will actually play. It's between Banton and Bartlett for the number four position, I think. And if Banton's batting at four, I'm not sure we'll be taking the gloves. Um, and obviously, we know that Banton. And has been reluctant in the past to take the gloves in the championship. He did in one game last year, but that was basically because you know Davis was injured or Davis was having an operation, I think. And yeah, it was sorry, wasn't it? And had to do it. There's no other option. Yeah, I hope to, sorry, he was obviously almost entirely rained off, so uh, didn't actually do much in the end. But yeah, yeah, I thought I'd be inclined to give it to to Rue as well. I think when you as a fully paid up member okay, of the Wicket Keepers Union as I am, I think w- when you're a wicket keeper, you want, you want to be a wicket keeper. It, it's what you've done 
um, since you were knee eye to a grasshopper, and it, it's kind of your role. You you keep wicket and you bat, and I think when you're you know, as a keeper, you always take it as a bit of an insult when somebody else is made keeper ahead of you. You think, well, hold on a minute, I'm a better keeper than him, and and th- and this, that, and the other. So, yeah, for me, I, I'd I'd give the gloves to Rue. Banton hasn't kept all championship season. I don't see any reason to um, to upset that particular apple cart. And yeah, I go with Rue. It's clearly the long term um, plan, especially as as Tom Banton hasn't put pen to paper for another year. Uh, when, uh, put, uh, <clears throat> put Ben to pay for a contract extension yet so yeah I think the plan is to go with Rue and why don't we strike while the iron's hot and, and go for it now well it's asking a lot of him that's all yeah, I, I, yeah I, I understand that but I just go back to the point if you're a keeper batsman you're, you're a keeper batsman it's you know it's you don't you don't kind of ease somebody into you don't they, you know, Ben Folks wasn't eased into Test cricket by you know having Johnny Bairstow keep and Ben Folks him sort of field for his first couple of Test matches and then take the gloves. I know I know I take the point that you know he is only eighteen, but mm. you know he's unburdened by uh, any sort of failure. And I think yeah, go for it. Well, I yeah, know. I wouldn't have a big problem. With that. I, mm-hmm. I think I'd have a problem with Bartlett being preferred to Banton, mm-hmm. judging by the way Bartlett played up at um, Southport. Oh, his his trigger movement is all over the shop. Exactly. Sometimes he was walking about two foot outside his off stump. Other times he was walking down the pitch. Other times he was sort of, yeah, it was, it was all over the place. He was, yeah, it's it's very strange, especially considering that he, you know, he was at the members' day. He was he was sort of in a net and he was at great pace to say, oh, I'm I'm trying to keep myself as still as possible and you know get my trigger movement sorted and completed before the the ball is released and. Watching him up at Lancashire, he, he seems to have got worse. If anything, and you know, if you can go back and have a go back and have a look at him a couple of seasons ago, he he wasn't really doing any of this. He was keeping a lot more still. And yeah, I don't know quite what's happened with George. Yeah, yeah. to be honest, but he's he's certainly not going in the in the direction he needs to at the moment. Um, Whereas Bant- Banton is striking it well now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, he's timing it well, and. You know, producing a few more shots as well. I mean, I, I know that's only talking in, in T Twenty terms, but he's looking a more all-round sort of batter mm-hmm. than, than he has in in the past, and and he has worked hard on his red ball game, and I think he deserves, you know, he deserves another chance to show what he can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the squad for tomorrow then is uh, Renshaw. Well, this is my team: uh, Renshaw, Lamaby, Abel, Banton, Goldsworthy, Rue, Gregory, Aldridge. Uh, Brooks or Van der Merwe, depending on what the pitch is like tomorrow morning, Siddle and Leach. So I'm leaving out Marchant Delanger, who I presume is only in the squad because there's a little bit of a question mark about Peter Siddle's fitness. Uh, Casey Aldridge. Uh, no, I've put Aldridge in. Who have I missed out then? Oh, I've only got two, yeah. Oh, That's right. right. Bartlett and uh, yeah. Bartlett and um, Delanger are my two. That, uh, are I'd be surprised playing. if Peter Siddle... I'd be very surprised if Peter Siddle plays... Very yeah, surprised. How, how did he look Saturday? I, I, I haven't seen it, but uh... he didn't. He, he was clearly suffering. He didn't bowl very well, and he didn't bowl. He only bowled three overs, and he was holding his right and no, left hip, which isn't ever a very good sign. And Tom Abel said to me afterwards that I asked him whether whether Siddle would be fit, and he didn't give me a, a straightforward answer. Just said that you know, a lot of the guys who played up at up at Southport were feeling the after effects of it and Siddle was one of those oh, so I think, will, I think March and Delango will probably come in instead of Peter Siddle yeah, I think Siddle bowled a lot of overs in Southport for not very much actually and I don't know if that was because he wasn't fully fit there or having the captaincy to think about as well as everything else made it twice as exhausting um not sure but yeah i was a bit worried for him on saturday given all he put into that game so um well, did let's 20, hope he's had a good long rest only did fine. 21 overs which is a pretty sparse workload for a championship game yeah but it was it was it was hot and the outfield was hard it was it was you know it was tough cricket up, up there it really was tougher than playing at Taunton yeah it certainly looked it right so uh, who are you going for uh, tomorrow Pete as your starting 11 
Well, I think I would uh, I would go pretty much for uh, what you've said. I, I'd leave out. It's the easier way to look at it. I would leave out Bartlett and Van der Merwe and the Langer, unless he's needed for Siddle. So pretty much in the same place, really. Yeah. Yeah. You can't nod, Dan, by the way, this is a podcast. You have to put your hand up and say, I'm in full agreement. I'm in full agreement yeah, with I, you. I, I agree, yeah. yeah. That's, that team is fine by me. Yeah. I mean, without Craig and Josh, it's a bit of a... We're kind of back to Hampshire at the start of the season with the resources, aren't we? Certainly in the bowling department, it's kind of a, an if-you-fit-your-play job, isn't it? We need, to, we need to produce a spinning wicket and Leachy wins the game. Right. Well, it's Leach, Leach versus Bess, which could be fun. Oh. Uh, yes, of course, the return. Uh, has, he, has he been back yet, Don Bess? Have we played Yorkshire at uh, home? No. Since? no um, we Not did in the chat cup last year, but Bess yeah. didn't play that game. He was with England, wasn't he? I think. Yeah. He played in the game up at Scarborough, didn't he? Yeah. Last mm-hmm. September, when we got beaten by an innings. But I don't think he hasn't played. He hasn't played Somerset at Taunton in the county championship. Welcome, return to Taunton for Don Best. Then um, we'll be rolling out the red carpet. I'm sure. Yeah, we can't produce spinning wickets. Only only Essex are allowed to do that. Uh, Dan, <laughs> what did how many wickets did Palmer get in the last game? Yeah. About forty-seven, was it? I don't know. It was just. 30, yeah. 30, uh, 30. It was a lot. And he seems to get him a lot on the first day as well, doesn't he? Yeah. This, mm. well, I don't mind. I don't mind spinning. Wickets. Because spinning wickets on the first day are great. It's just that no one ever seems to talk about it. People look at us, Taunton. They see a few wickets sort of spin on the first day and go, oh, the Taunton wicket's playing up again. But they look at a scorecard from Charles, and no, they don't seem to bat an eyelid. I, I don't know. I think people just notice Taunton for some reason. They don't notice Chelmsford. But people don't necessarily look at what's actually happened. They just look at the scorecard and just go, oh, look. Yeah, Michael Vaughan was doing this back at the peak of Cyberband. Like, oh, look, 20 wickets in a day at Taunton. Oh, it's an outrage, you know. But without yeah, yeah. even looking at what actually gone on, you know. You and Paul Allen nearly came to blows about it, about the 2018 pitch with the tied game and 77 all out, Gibbo, didn't you, when you were on comps? Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, not to blows, <laughs> yeah, hyperbole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just reminded him of, um, of of what he was saying at the time about the Taunton pitch. <laughs> he's, uh, he's a good bloke, Paul Allen, yeah. but... Um, and and a very good commentator too, mm. but yeah, he was really you know he was he was bare with a sore head that that, that <laughs> day. He was <laughs> the language was something something else, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's um, I, I think the I, I I don't see any alternative really to a spinning pitch for the for the Yorkshire game. If if we produce a standard Taunton pitch as of this season, they're going to get six hundred. Yeah, you know. Um, Harry Harry Brook is in the form of his life. He's got nearly a thousand runs this this season already. Adam Lythe is you know another one who's in fantastic form. They got 180 the other week, didn't they? Yeah, you know it's and John and Johnny Tassel as well got 180 in the last game. So you know I don't think the answer will be with seam. It's in the absence of of Craig Overton, who's such a force at, at Taunton, so it's got to be it's got to be a spinner's wicket, which will of course prepare us for our trip down to Chelmsford in a week or so's time. Mm-hmm. It or will. So it? Essex won't have Simon Harmer, will they? Because oh, it's a he's, shame, he's, isn't it? Oh, we'll, we'll be with South Africa. Oh, we'll have a pitch greener than Kermit's backside. Then, in that case, won't yeah. they? Yeah. <laughs> no instead. <laughs> oh, whoa. We've done a lot this today, guys. Um, shall we crack on with a few uh, listeners' questions? Apologies if we don't get to yours, but I'm going to have to uh, selectively filter them, given that we've uh, done nearly 50 minutes and I'm about to melt here in the roll-off and the Merva Pavilion. We will start with... Uh, let's go with... Ooh, Neil says, Has Hildreth played his last four-day game for Somerset? I very much fear so. Yeah, I, I can't. Now that Goldsworthy and Rue have got those those runs up at Southport, I don't. There doesn't seem to be an easy way for him to get back into the side as well. Considering you didn't really get any runs for the second day, neither, neither did Will Smead. He played a terrible shot, Will Smead. 
Go, go and have a look at it on the on the on the highlights of the second eleven game against Worcester. It wasn't particularly good at all. Um, any further contributions to a rather gloomy, I fear so, <laughs> Dan Pete. I, th- I think in an ideal world, well, not an ideal world, but if Joe just wants to go out in a nice way, he should announce soon that he's going to retire at the end of the season, and then he can play the one day cup, and hopefully he can have a few scores in that and it hopefully go out with a trophy at the end of it that would be the best way for him to for him to go out because he, he almost certainly played the one day cup campaign and he was pretty good for us in it last year so he was. hopefully he can, yeah. so we can see him off on a high note maybe all our players should cancel their 100 contracts to give us a proper chance of winning the one day cup to give Hildreth the send off that he <laughs> yeah. deserves yeah, yeah see, I think if, see if, that if he then. finds if he finds his way back into our county championship team now, um, things will have gone from bad to worse. That's in the worse bad thing, yeah. Probably, right? <laughs> it's very true. Well, I suppose played, they could have got a lot better because all our top four could score buckets of runs in the next few weeks and be playing for the England Test match thing. But that, that's there, true. Is, there is that. That's so you've got to find the positives of it. Um <laughs> Oh, this one from Barry. Both as head coach and director of cricket, Andy Ho has presided over a lot of near misses. Is he just a nearly man? Do we need a change at the top? Not that high, Pete. I think you're safe. In light of our <laughs> championship form, was the decision to give Jason Kerr a contract extension the right one? Um, we'll start with you on this I one, think, Pete. Think, no, we won't. We'll... He's the right to answer that one. <laughs> yeah, well, I, uh, I, 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 I think that there are. I think they're a really strong team, and if you look at the. Um, if you look at the uh, at the success of the club in terms of our longevity in the top division, if you look at how many times we've had an near miss, if you look at the number of final days we've had, we won the trophy in the 50 over when it uh, when it still meant something. Um, I, I think there's plenty to uh, celebrate, and there are fine margins, particularly in the in the T20. Uh, I think they're building a really strong sense of team and, 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 and collective effort. You so you have to wonder if there's that kind of killer instinct. And and I think, you know, we've we've touched on before, particularly in, in, in the batting, when when we've had a sort of Devon Conway or a Baba Azam or you know, one or two really kind of experienced top notch people on the pitch that the can inspire and guide the others, I think we've I think it's all they're all thereabouts, and I haven't even mentioned the number of players you know we'd have coming through and making the pathway through to to the England team. So even if you judge Somerset on the kind of grounds of those who think that the purpose of the counties is to generate international players, um, we're doing that as well. So I feel there's plenty to celebrate. Yes, we're not quite there yet, but just choosing to have a kind of ceremonial sacking um, for the sake of it uh, isn't in in my view the kind of obvious answer or next step I think the more obvious answer as I say is to find one or two people who the rest of the squad can rally around and my sort of worry at the moment is so many roads lead back to Tom Abel and what an amazing bloke he is but he carries all our kind of hopes and dreams and uh you know emotions and uh, and all the rest of it and uh i i'd like to feel that i think maybe you know others of us in the leadership of the club could be doing more kind of alongside him to celebrate and support and take responsibility in front up to anthony's most difficult uh, questions uh, after matches that haven't quite gone the way we wanted them to. You know what you've just signed yourself up for, Pete, don't you? Every, <laughs> every day I past six now, from now to the end of September. Come on, Pete, down you come. Yeah, just remember yeah. My, my cricket knowledge is based on a computer game. You know, so, uh... Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose sort of from, from my perspective, it's, it's kind of looking at the, the batters that are coming through because obviously... Trez was different class, Hildreth the same, but they've kind of dropped off. And apart from Tom Abel, nobody's really come through. I mean, Bartlett's come in and kind of drifted away. Banton's the same. He hasn't really kicked on from the potential that he showed three or four years ago. Eddie Byram's another one who's, who's sort of come in. Um, had such massive hopes for him. And then he's just kind of, he's kind of drifted away, you know, I mean... 
people I was speaking to um, sort of early days like oh he's going to be the next trust guy that he's bloody good this bar I mean he, and he did sort of have a, have a good start but he just never really kicked on and it just seems to me that that's that's where we're the, the the final piece in the jigsaw is we need to get these young players the prime case in point Lewis Goldsworthy James Root this is the start now you guys kick on we we need to build that environment for them to thrive and succeed and get better not have one or two seasons where we say oh look at them they're promising young players and then they kind of just sort of drift away and, and drift off into obscurity so that will possibly be my uh, be my only sort of criticism of, of the coaching staff over the last few years is that our batting hasn't grown it, we haven't replaced the likes of, of Trez and Hildy and probably even Peter Trigo to a to a degree as well those sort of the three horsemen of the great Somerset side of the of the 2000s but um yeah, I mean, don't know what you think, Dan and Anthony, but um, I, well, I, I, I do think that there's a lot to be said for what you what you just said. It's it's the the fact that you know these very talented young batters like Tom Lambie and and George Bartlett until the last game, um, Lewis Goldsworthy as well. You know, Tom Banton. You know, they're they're obviously full of talent, but they haven't really trained on. You know, since they came into the side, you know, they haven't made the progress that you would have expected and you know there are technical issues that uh, you know not me but, but people who know about these things have spotted I mean you mentioned earlier on about moving around in the crease it's something that Tom Banton does he very often doesn't have his head, head still when he when he plays plays the shot and you know these are relatively straightforward things to coach you would have thought um, I mean we've got the, a batting coach now um, but I didn't I haven't seen him recently and you know from the the batting performance up at Southport didn't suggest that some of our batters have learned very much <laughs> over the course of the of, of, of this season so that that's my only question mark but I take I absolutely accept what, what Peter says about the record over the last 10 you know 15 years most other counties would you know would be absolutely d delighted to have done as well as we have uh, in, in Somerset, you know, to have, to have been in the first division since 2008. No other county has, has managed that. And, OK, w you know, we may be nearly men, but we've been nearly an, an awful, <laughs> awful lot of times. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure that you can blame the, the coaching setup for the fact that we haven't quite got over the line. Uh, once or twice. I mean, you know, go back to 2019. It was the rain that did us. Yeah. Um, you know, a poor performance down at down at the ATS Bowl, and then it pissed with rain for for the last game against uh, against Essex. You can't blame Andy Hurry and, and Jason Kerr for that. Oh, believe me, so, some of them will find a way to uh, <laughs> give us. Some of them will find a way to. And and you know, I mean, I I they seem to me at any rate to be a pretty happy crew. You know, they all seem to get get on well together. They're positive. They're you know polite and and helpful. And you know, I I, I don't have a, a big issue with the, the coaching side of things. But I do think Lachlan Stevens needs to you know do something to sort out some of the technical issues that some of our young batters have. Yeah, I suppose that's the acid test, isn't it? You look at all these players, what they were doing in in twenty twenty one, and if they're still making the same mistakes at the end of twenty twenty two. You know, you yeah. give Lockwood Stevens his sandwiches in a roadmap and say, thank you very much, off you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very, very easy to measure the success of a batsman. It's a thing called runs. And if they're not scoring more runs, then the batting coach isn't doing his job, I'm afraid. it's It, it really is as simple as that. Yeah. Uh, one from John Hayes. I think this might be uh, aimed at you, Pete. It says, uh, are there any plans to extend and develop the Cooper Associates County Ground? Well, I know that they're going to build another level on the top of the year in both of them, Stan. Yeah, but that's apart the from next that, I don't think there is anything much else in the pipeline, is there? That's the, that's the next priority, to um, yeah, modernise and extend that stand. No, I'm not aware of anything uh, beyond that. And I'm, I'm certainly not aware of any plans to move anywhere else. Somebody also asked about outgrounds, didn't they? Oh, they did, yeah, that would have been, um, let's find that question, okay, well, well I'll just go through them in order quickly, um, have we seen Tom, uh, Richard Freeman, have we seen Tom Banton play his last white ball game for Somerset, well, that's 
Well, we kind of touched on that before. That's in Bounce's hands. I presume the contract is in his uh, in his pigeonhole, waiting to be signed. It's just a question of. Uh, well, he signs it. A guy called Phil Kingdom has said, "Did Dan Kingdom really pay six pounds for a small ice cream at Edgbaston?" Yeah, well, after the semi-final loss, I wanted to cheer myself up, so I went to the ice cream van, went in the queue, saw that it was five, it was five pound for a small one and six pound for a double one. But and I just thought, like, that's a lot of money. But I, my heart was set on an ice cream, so I went for it. And I thought, I might as well get the double one for an extra quid. Unfortunately, a double one wasn't really much bigger than a single, to be honest. The amount of ice cream actually go. But yes, I did pay six pounds for ice cream, and it was all right. How much was the pint of beer then? How much was the pint of beer? I didn't get any. I don't usually drink at cricket, but I heard it was seven pound fifty. Despite despite all the wine at Southport, I did buy myself a, a large ice cream there, and I think that was three pounds. Oh, that's yeah. that's proper value for money. Really so that's cool. outground value for you, isn't it? You see? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the, yeah. I tell you what, the beer in the pubs around Southport, which is it was excellent, three pounds a pint. That's good. It's, I tell you, it's a lot cheaper up north, isn't it? It is. Should we all start supporting Lancashire and just move up there? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, right, where are we going here? Oh, Tom Tugendhat's been knocked out of the Conservative Party leadership contest, if you're uh, interested in that sort of thing. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Carl Ernest, uh, shall we make a turning pitch for Yorkshire game? Yes, we are. Uh, Jake, learn why do you think Steve Davis hasn't been named in the squad? Because he's not been scoring any runs. Ah, yeah, Scott Wilson. Uh, with other counties using outgrounds at this time of year, would you like Somerset to bring back an outground? And if so, which one? Well, to my shame, I've never watched Somerset play at an outground. Um, so I shall leave this... Uh, well, technically I have. I watched them down at South Devon when they when they played us in a few testimonial games over the years. But um, as far as uh, home games at, at outgrounds, I'm ashamed to say I never have. But um, yeah, should, should we make a return to outgrounds? I mean, it, it's not popular, but, uh, especially with Somerset because of the... The whole infrastructure, isn't it? Essentially, it's a lift and shift of your operation at your headquarters out into into the shires, and um, it does make it a lot more difficult, especially to uh, to to make some money. But other other counties manage it. Mm. Lancashire managed it to to Eggbirth and, and Southport. And it was it was, all, it was all very well organised. It mm. was you know. Well, I suppose yeah, but you've got the you've got the pressures on the Test match ground, haven't you? With I, I, yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. I don't think Old Trafford was being used this week, but the, kind of the point still stands that Kent Kent play at Beckenham and they play at Tunbridge Wells. It, it, it is possible, but you need a, you need a lot of support from your sort of strategic and corporate partners um, to to make the numbers add up. I mean, emotionally and as a supporter, I'm a huge fan of the outgrounds, and uh, in fact, it was a, I, I'd seen Somerset at Bath Street, Glastonbury. Bristol Imperial, uh, Western Supermare, before I ever went to Taunton, um, and uh, and that's just because you know we were grew up. In fact, I grew up in Chippenham. I even saw Somerset play at Chippenham when the minor counties were at home. Chippenham played mm -hmm. Somerset, and I remember running onto the pitch and getting Brian Rose's autograph in the rain and the pen didn't work properly and I've still got and I ought to get his autograph properly ought to I really <laughs> I've only got this sort of half-hearted one where the did you pen imagine was that, that 40 years hence you be succeeded yeah. as president it's it feels slightly like embarrassing yeah. to uh, <laughs> ask him for his autograph now but I really I really should so yeah I, I mean I, I think I, it, it, wouldn't it be brilliant and you and, and well I've got I've uh, got his Paris. autograph Pete I've got his autograph here Pete I'll photocopy it for you if you want it <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd like to see. I'd like to see us play again and um, in the park in Western Supermare, just because it's such a bizarre and extraordinary um, experience. But it's not going to happen. No, that's not. I tell you, I, I, I'd like to see us playing up at Bath. I just wonder whether we could play at Lansdowne at, at, at Bath. Whether you know whether they got the facilities there. It's a very good club with a with a you know nice pavilion and everything. Because there are a lot of cricket. Somerset cricket followers in Bath mm. and we can't play at the wreck anymore uh, and Bath Cricket Club is too small the ground is too small for first class cricket I just wonder whether Lansdowne might might work but it would uh, you know it would be good you know for um, some feasibility studies to be <laughs> to be carried out to, have, to have, a, have a look at it because you know at Southport they, they, they closed the gates on the first afternoon 
um, because they were full, 2,200 people. And, you know, it was a fantastic atmosphere, all sitting sitting around enjoying the cricket in the sunshine, and it was you know, just county cricket as it should be. And whilst Taunton is a lovely ground, we are a very big county, Somerset. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, people up at Bath do feel a bit neglected at the moment. Yeah, and Taun- yeah Taunton is very southwest in the county, isn't it? So if you yeah, are... Taunton, both, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's about seven miles from the Devon border. It is. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll get it to the exact point, uh, decimal fraction of a mile when I come up on Wednesday. And I, I shall let you know in the uh, in Gibbo's commentary cabin. Uh, when I see you, um, this is a funny. We got rumor. a commentary gazebo, according to Spencer's. A gazebo. About... You're not. You're going to be yeah, in a not... sauna this week. No, oh, thank God. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't think we'd survive if we were in the cabin. I mean, <laughs> I was going to say it'd be it'd be quite like a it'd be almost a sauna, wouldn't it? I mean, I, I would have expected a knock on the door, say hello, Gibbo, and see you and Jonathan Deutsch sat there in your underpants. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 please. <laughs> More like um, an oven. Uh, Rumour, now this is interesting, from Robert Blackwell. Um, he says that Lancashire fans near Russell Edgbaston were saying Joss Butler is definitely leaving and coming back to Somerset. Well, I'm having lunch with his father in law tomorrow. So he lives in him. London. <laughs> yeah, they live yeah. in um, Appham. Yeah, I mean, he could sign for they have, they Somerset. Have, they have looked at playing down here. But they couldn't find the right property. This was two, three years ago. But I'll ask, I'll ask his father-in-law tomorrow and see what he says. Yeah, I mean, it, but I haven't, I haven't heard anything recently. It's a bit. The fans are a bit disillusioned with uh, Joss, aren't they? Because he's barely yeah. played for them, well, so yeah, they, I mean, they haven't got that sort of emotional connection to him, which so many of us have. So, so they, it's a sort of rumor that I would have expected them to be spreading anyway. There was an instance a couple of year, uh, couple of weeks ago, wasn't there? I think Lancashire had a, had a blast game, and Butler rocked up to play in some charity game down at Lords, didn't he? Rather than uh, um, than playing for Lancashire. So yeah, I mean, it'd probably be a moot point anyway, because while he's still firmly embedded in the England white ball setup, we probably wouldn't see him much anyway, really, would we? And he hasn't. When was the last time he played a, a championship game for Lancashire? It's probably what two, three years. I don't. I'd say, I don't know, think it's he not was recently. No. I mean, I think he's. I mean, to be honest, he, he if he's going to get back in the England Test match side, it probably doesn't matter that um, what Championship form he's got, does it? Really? I mean, he's he got in there without having a lot of Championship form, so he can probably get back in there in in the Basball Revolution um, with uh, what he does in the IPL. But he's lost it. Butler has lost his form quite spectacularly over the last few weeks, hasn't he? I mean, it seems like a, a, years ago he was making all those billions of runs in the IPL and then smashing it all over the place in Amsterdam, and then all of a sudden, England have just come back, come back down to earth with a bump in these last few one days, haven't they? It's um, it's quite remarkable. Well, Indian, Indian bowlers are quite you're quite useful, you know. Oh, are you saying they're better than the Dutch bowlers? Are you saying they're better than <laughs> Roland van der Berver and Paul van Meekeren? <laughs> Oh, should we have one final question then and knock it on the head? Let's find a good one. Oh, so many questions about Tom Banton's contract here, Pete. You're going to have to get your ear to the ground. Let us know. Oh, there was a good one. There are, was... they, are they connecting him with? Are they connecting him with Surrey or, or Warwickshire? Um, no, put, nobody really. Surrey. Surrey is the latest rumor I've heard. Surrey. Yeah. Yeah, a bit short I've heard players at Surrey. Well, if your hundred theories right, Gibbo, he'll be going to the Welsh. He'll be going to Glamorgan. Mm, not a chance. <laughs> I don't think he'll be going to Glamorgan. <laughs> how funny would that be? How, just how funny would that be? October fifteenth or whatever. Email pings through. Tom Panton aside for Glamorgan. You're back to your international yeah. cricket captain, Pete. That's the kind of thing that happened in that. Um, I think we're done for questions this week. Um, um, there's one more. Oh, is um, there? Well, I got. I got DM'd a couple of questions. Oh, um, we kind of covered them a bit. But I was this, this is um, feeling like a bloody director's is, cut now, Dan. We're going off for uh, this is longer than Lord of the Rings. The special um, extended super director's cut. Go on. We can be super quick about them. Um, is it the end for Davis and Hildy? If so, how do we replace? If so, do we replace them with signings or with youngsters? Youngsters. Mm. Yeah. Caveat. Caveat. Back to. Getting the youngsters uh, on the right trajectory yet? 
Yeah. You look at the Yorkshire, you look at the Yorkshire team that that'll play tomorrow. All born in Yorkshire, apart from Shannon Gabriel and Don Bass. And Don Bass. <laughs> True. Are Don they going Bess. back to the old days then? Are they are they reintegrating that policy? Well, they're just well. Uh, no, I don't think so. It's just that they are developing their own young cricketers, and that's what we ought to be aspiring to do as well. Not buying in. Oh yes, that was another point, wasn't it? The uh, the Somerset team up at Southport, not one Somerset born player. First yeah. time ever. Really? I think it's so. You got, you got outstatted by Steve Pittard, former landlord of the Rose and Crown at Hughes and Whiskey, better known as Eli's. It's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. We had no Somerset born players, and it's the first time it's ever happened in a first class match oh. or any. In a first class match, yeah. You've got a look okay. you've got a look of a man taking on a challenge there, Dan. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just interested to know. Um, the other question was, um, Hampshire's bowl has effectively won the, won them the blast. Is ours good enough to win the tournament slash any changes for next year? So do we need to change our bowlers, basically, to win, to help us win the blast next year? And as I said earlier, I think we need to, in an ideal world, sign a top quality death bowl from overseas, and that would really help. Plus, full availability of Overton and Davey would be good. Yeah. And uh, uh, Roloff as a solid spin option, and that's that's four-fifths of it, sort of, I think. And as well, I right. think... I think Max Waller has been hard done by this year. I think he had a good few years left in him, and I don't really know why he's, he's not played. He's not been picked in the last... How many games did he miss at the end of last season? Six, so that's probably, what, six, 21 games he's not featured in? Mm. No, he, he won't feature anymore. I think we ought to sign Nathan Ellis. He would be my, mm. um, my pick. <laughs> I thought he was tremendous. Apart from his no ball. That was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he certainly I said, about, I said about five hours ago that we were going to talk about the comical end of the Hampshire Lancashire final. We finally got to it. Pretty comical, wasn't it? The fireworks going off and then having to wait for the smoke to clear and the no ball. And the. Yeah. Was it. What do you think, Dan? Because yeah, the MCC officially be, said that it shot. was a dead ball. What did you think? I, it's your theory. Yeah, yeah, just keep um, running. I, 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 yeah, well, yeah, I agree with MCC, I think, yeah, they, yeah, the MCC are correct, I mean, obviously, I have to agree with MCC, they're literally the rule makers, but yeah, I think they're correct, the umpires implied, because, because Hartley stopped, the umpires yeah. thought, okay, the ball was dead, like, and the ball had gone to the wicketkeeper, um, I think this situation could be cleared up more easily if you just said that once the ball hits the stumps, the ball, ball is dead, and that's it, and that's been taught, I've seen that talked about in the past, because it's a way of rewarding direct hits, with, you know, it encourages people to just go for it, and if they hit the stumps, then no more runs can be scored. You don't have to worry about ricochets and then overthrows and all that sort of thing. Um, so basically, Tom Hartley possibly lost them the match by stopping, just sort of stopping, and then he sort of turned around and realised Gleeson was coming back. But I don't understand why Hartley would stop. I don't know why cricketers don't always just run and run and run until you're you. You love that, don't you? Every, every the end, <laughs> literally the end of every single blast. Yeah. I don't know why they didn't keep running. I don't know why they didn't keep running. <laughs> yeah, I, I do tweet about it a fair bit because it's just cricketers mm. just leaving potential runs out there. Just mm. like there's nothing to lose. Just keep going, even if you look like an idiot. Like, and who cares if you look like an idiot when you're trying to win the Blast Trophy? I mean, if Harley had just carried on running, they, Hampshire probably would have been a bit more careful about making sure they ran out. But they would have put the fielders under pressure if they just kept going. You know, there was an incident in the Ireland Namibia match in the Cricket World Cup, in the T20 World Cup last year, where Ireland match. I should tell you, they just kept going, like, and Namibia just panicked, you know, so, just, yeah, last ball of Olympus delivers innings, always just run and run and run, except, to be fair, in the first innings of a knockout blast game, because obviously wickets lost are then taken, are taken into account but, um, for a tie, but apart from that. Or league cricket games, where sometimes running. you get bonus points for, for picking up wickets, so you could give the opposition another bonus point. But yeah, hour and 15 minutes, um, Western Storm play the Sunrisers down at Chelmsford this week, Dan, and I gather they picked up a victory. Yeah, that bright in the day a little bit on Saturday. Yeah, they a good win. I mean, some riders started really well. They've got 148 for none uh, or 30 overs, but they can only manage 254 in the end. Um, two wickets for Sophia Smale, who's having a really good season. So, to her debut season, Western Storm left. I think your internet's given up the ghost as well, Dan. Do you want to repeat what you just said? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to repeat all of that, um, Dan? Because yeah, your internet. Uh, the whole thing. Oh. Okay, Sun Roses were 148 <laughs> for none. They got to 254 for six. Sophia Smell got 2 for 40. She's a very good left-off spinner in her debut season, one to look out for. 
four. Um, Storm got 103 for five. Then, but Sophie Luff and Katie George put on a partnership of 125. Luff ended 100 not out. George smashed 74, 43 balls. So Storm won by three wickets, and they are currently fourth in the table. Two wins from three, so looking all right at the moment. Um, big game this Saturday, home to Southie Stars at Cheltenham, uh, which I'll be going to. Um, and it's a rare bit of weekend local cricket that's left in this season, so I encourage all Somerset fans to head up to Cheltenham. Um, it's quite a big game, really. I think with the game Storm have got left, this is one of the more winnable ones. Um, and obviously the top three go through. So it's, yeah, Storm really need to be winning this one, I think. It should, yeah. Be a, yeah, it should be a good match. Part of the Cheltenham Cricket Festival. I think they've already advised that they're doing three 90-minute sessions tomorrow. Somerset might be doing that as well, three 90-minute sessions because of the heat wave. But I gather it's a bit of a TBC at the moment. But, uh, but we shall see. Um been a long one, guys. Got any other business, or do we want to go and have our tea? Not going to have tea. Me. All right, fair days. Oh, and I've we've run out of time again for my joke about the Taunton Road works. It's a cl- it's a good one, but I'll uh, I'm going to have to tell it uh, on the next episode. Um, guys, I'll uh, uh, Peter, are you down there this week at all? No, can't make it this week. I'm afraid I do have uh, presidential duties on Thursday, but we can talk about them some other time. Oh, you're up at Lords, aren't you? Yes. What uh, did you find mm. out? What the collective now for a group of presidents is? No, I don't know. Uh, don't know. I said and so. I don't know who the other presidents are either. I need to go and consult my wisdom. Well, the uh, the MCC are very graciously allowing you to take your jackets off in this heatwave, but you still need to wear shoes, yeah. trousers, shirt, and tie. Oh, okay, <laughs> Which, thanks. That's <laughs> useful to know. Given the average age of MCC members, there's probably going to be a fleet of ambulances queued up on St John's Wood Road to uh, uh, to ferry all those uh, elderly heat stroke victims off to uh, to hospital during the Middlesex and there uh, was it Middlesex playing Sussex, Sussex this week. Yeah. yeah. Happy days there, right, Gibbo? I'll be at Wednesday. I'll uh, where's, if you, are you up on the Thatcher's Terrace in your gazebo? I'm not sure where the gazebo is going to be, but. You'll be very welcome to join us in it. <laughs> Pop in that. Probably the way your commentary positions are going, you'll be in Morrison's car park with a series of uh, sort of reflective <laughs> mirrors so you can see the crown. But, uh, oh, brilliant. Right, uh, thanks for sticking with us on this uh, extended edition of Always Look on the Right Side of Life. Uh, but for Pete, uh, Dan and Anthony, we will catch you next time.